Now I've mentioned we need to send our tweets and background jobs. So what that means is similar to mailers, we have things like API requests that will take some time and we want the browser to actually get a response very, very quickly. So we want to do those outside of that request and we can use a background job to send the worker um, that job to process and it can take its time and it can even retry it if it fails. And that might happen if Twitter went down and you try to send a tweet and it fails. You can retry that say five or 10 times and wait different amounts between them. And that's what we're gonna do for sending our tweets. So we're gonna wire this up by using another callback in our tweet model. Um, but we're first going to create a job that we can queue up in our app. Now Rails has active job as a functionality uh, or feature built into Rails. And you'll see that in the app jobs folder. And we can create a new job by going into our, our terminal and running Rails generate job. And we'll call this the tweet job. That will generate a test file and our job. So if we go into there, we'll see the tweet job now. And this is very simple. It says, what queue should we run this on? The default queue. And what do we need to do as our work in the perform method? So you can change this arguments. Um, by default, it will accept all arguments that you give it and convert them into an array. But we just need a simple tweet. And we can call our uh, tweet publish to Twitter method. And we will just say tweet.publish to Twitter inside of here. And that is it. We just need that in this method and we don't need anything more for the very basic use case. However, if we ever needed to call this two times, for example, our tweet might already be published and we wouldn't want to publish a duplicate. So what we can do is we can say return if tweet is already published, and that's just gonna help prevent duplicate tweets from getting published. Now, when we create a tweet in our tweet controller, one of the places we could put that is say tweetjob.perform later at tweet, and that will kick off our tweet job. It will basically say, hey, here's a job to go do. Whenever you get time, go do that, and it will perform it later. But we need to actually use the set method here, and we want to say wait until at tweet.publish at, because we want this job to actually run in the future at the time that you said you wanted to publish that tweet. So this is important. We need that wait until to actually do that correctly. But what happens when you update a tweet? We've created a job and we might change the time we want to uh, publish at, and it might be sooner than later and we still have this job and we would have to queue up another job to run it sooner and we need to handle that accordingly. So the way we can do that is we can also queue up a job on update and we can do this if the uh, publish at time has changed. So if, if you have a tweet and you move the time before or after or whatever, then we can queue up another job for that time. And that's gonna be very useful to uh, make sure that the tweet can be changed. But we can leave those jobs around because oftentimes it's actually very hard to cancel a job once you create one. You don't want to actually cancel it. You just want your job to be able to look at the tweet and see if it should still run or not. And that's gonna be very helpful for your jobs and logic and retrying and all of those things because when things get more complicated, you're gonna want to just kick off those jobs and have them do nothing sometimes and that will be an easier way of managing them rather than trying to cancel a job because that can be um, pretty tricky and cause some issues. So it's better not to do it that way. So let's actually replace these two lines of code in our controller because one of the things we don't want to do in our controller is add too much stuff in there. So we're going to have the save method and the update as usual, and we can use a callback inside of our tweet model to handle the tweet scheduling. So what we'll do is we'll call after save commit, where this has been committed to the database and it's been saved, and that will happen on create and update. And we will check if publish at was previously changed. This happens after it's been saved to the database. So these are considered previous changes. 
And if it's been changed, then we will queue up that job. So we will use the publish at, and we don't need to pass in the tweet because we're inside of the tweet model. We can just use self instead. And that's gonna take care of queuing up that job. But the job is going to need a additional if statement in here. And we want to return if the tweets publish at is greater than the current time. And that is um, the situation when someone rescheduled a tweet to the future. So let's imagine we have a tweet at uh, noon and someone reschedules it to 8 a.m. So you might go from noon to 8 a.m. That's one where you push the publish at forward in time. Um, and that way, you are sending it sooner. So you'll end up with a job that runs at noon and a job that runs at 8 a.m. The 8 a.m. job will run first and set the tweet ID, set tweet ID. And this noon job is going to see that it was published, does nothing. So that is solved for us by this uh, original line five where we check if it's published or not. And if we end up going the other direction and we do something where we publish it at 9 or 8 a.m., for example, let's do 9 a.m. just so it's a little different, and 1 p.m. If we go that direction, our 9 a.m. job is going to run. And this one should do nothing. And it needs to check the publish at timestamp in the database because it hasn't been published yet. It's the first job for the tweet. But it needs to say, hey, let's not do anything because you've updated the time to actually be later on in the day. And then our 1 p.m. job should publish the tweet and set the tweet ID. So we have to be careful about these um, examples because we don't want to break some of the those use cases um, and publish the tweet too soon or whatever. And that is all happening because the time could change when the user decides, oh, let's move this to a different time. We're leaving those background jobs and these background jobs are just going to sit around and they just need to say, okay, no, that's fine. We don't need to do anything after all. Um, you're basically just queuing up things that say, hey, when this time happens, go check and see if you still need to do your job. And if you do, go for it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, we'll take care of it somewhere else. And that's really all we're doing here and keeping it very, very simple to make that all work. And I understand this can be a little bit confusing, but most of this is actually more straightforward than you expect. You'll just want to print out the times as you run your jobs and you'll be able to understand what's going on there. And most of this stems from the uh, concept of you can't cancel jobs. You should just create jobs that you can create and they're smart enough to know whether or not they should run or not. And that is the architecture that you really want to use. And it will help you write better code and background jobs in the future when things are more complicated.